Hello everyone, this is Venom Geek Media here, and more specifically, welcome to the Arsenal. This is where we take a look at all the shipboard mounted weapons within Star Trek, and we look at their development, design, and history. And this week, we're going to be taking a look at the Photon Torpedo. Now, you will have seen by the title that I am making a bold claim, but it's one that I do believe is backed up by lore and canon, and so I'll go into it, and that is that the Klingons are the ones who developed the Photon Torpedo. So, without any further ado, we'll get into it. So, the reason I believe this to be so is, for starters, in Enterprise, when they encounter a Klingon Raptor, they see, they note that it is armed with Photon, Photon, not Photonic, but Photon Torpedoes. And bearing in mind, later on, we'll see that the Vulcans will say that they use Photonic torpedoes, which are closer to the human photonic torpedoes. And I will draw a delineation between photon and photonic torpedoes, even though I'm sure in the reality of the show was just a small, you know, detail to suggest some kind of difference. The other evidence we have is the overwhelming Klingon preference for photon torpedoes, most clearly in all of the movies. We see it in the motion picture, we see it in Star Trek 3, we see it in Star Trek 6. The Klingons seem to have an overwhelming preference for using photon torpedoes. And combine this with the fact that in the 23rd century, the Klingons actually probably have a tech advantage, certainly in the early 23rd century, and perhaps in some areas, and perhaps one of those areas is in photon torpedoes, into the late 23rd century, it would certainly explain a lot and explain why they have this overwhelming engagement preference for using photon torpedoes. And we won't see that carry through into the next generation era where they will start using disruptors. So they do lose that tech advantage. But I certainly think that there's a very strong case to make that the Klingons were the ones who actually invented modern photon torpedoes. So we'll get on to that. So there's really different stages that I'll go through as to how the torpedo is actually developed and the different formulations that are used. But essentially, that's worth bearing in mind there are two key traits to create a photon torpedo. One is the warhead, or the projectile. The other is the launching mechanism, and that is almost just as important as the torpedo. So those are just the two factors you want to bear in mind as we get into this breakdown. So first, we'll get into why the Klingons invented them. So this was probably in around about late 19th and maybe 20th centuries as the Klingons begin and they encounter the old powers of the Orions, the Creosians, the Malurians, so on and so forth, all these sort of ancient races. And they enter it and they see that there is a system that exists which they will later describe as deadlock warfare. The system of deadlock warfare is very simple. Basically, you have your shields and you also have your armor. Your shields are effective against projectiles. Your armor is effective against particle weapons. So, these shields are very weak, and so you would actually raise them and lower them as and when you need them rather than leaving them permanently up, because if you left them permanently up, they could be knocked down very easily by the enemy particle weapons. So you would have them down and only raise them once a projectile was launched at you. Primitive forms of torpedo generally, although sometimes railguns too. So this created what was known as deadlock warfare, where basically it's a game of getting you to drop your shields or using two ships attacking simultaneously with both weapon systems to force a decision onto the enemy. This was deadlock warfare, and it didn't really favour the Klingons very well. They didn't much care for it. It, wasn't, it was very defensive and very conservative, and the Klingons didn't really have large enough ships to contend with it. These were heavyweight fights that were fought between large galleons in a very sort of defensive manner. The Klingons said basically, fuck that noise, they don't want to deal with that. What the Klingons did instead was start developing weaponry that could break this status quo. 
and you would have, as a result of this, disruptors and torpedoes. So in this video, we're talking about the torpedoes, so we'll get on with that. So you have the Mark I antimatter torpedo. This is a very powerful antimatter warhead. Now, I should characterize this and say that it is a raw antimatter warhead. That means that there's a lot of problems with that. It's not very efficient. It's very inconsistent. But for its time, it was very powerful and good against both shields and armor, which made it an excellent weapon because you could just plug away at an enemy ship with these new antimatter torpedoes and they would eventually die one way or another. But there was a problem with this. These torpedoes were propelled by thrusters, much like the nuclear torpedoes Enterprise starts out with. It gives them a much shorter range. They can be easily evaded or destroyed. And they lacked sustainer engines, so they couldn't be used at warp. The Mark II torpedo was, was then named Photonic, and this is because it incorporated a sustainer engine. And this is the critical thing. The sustainer engine obviously then means it can travel at warp. So it incorporated a sustainer engine and then became really the primary projectile weapon for the Klingons. There was a problem. It still had a relatively low range and slower speed, but you could use it at warp. The yield of the warhead would also vary heavily because they weren't controlling the reaction. Reaction efficiency could be anywhere from 20% to 80% anywhere within that ballpark so you might be very lucky or you might not it wasn't a very consistent weapon now one of the issues that is addressed is the issue of range and that is when the klingons invent the torpedo launcher and this is a distinct element and you can then see it incorporated on future klingon designs similar to a railgun in that it has an acceler a magnetic accelerator barrel and you would first see it used on the d3 and then the D4, which was actually built to fully incorporate this new launcher system. And this gave the torpedoes vastly improved range. They could really reach out there now. And also, they could bypass some point defences. Now, the other half of that is that the because it can now travel at warp, it would also have a navigational deflector, so that it doesn't blow up because it collides with a bit of subatomic particles. Because it has that navigational deflector it actually helps protect it from certain forms of point defenses notably lasers now this isn't a hundred percent and certainly a good laser can still cut through it but this was a technology that was present in the early klingon photonic torpedoes and this is something that they would go on to improve on in future models of torpedo because of the improved offensive potential of that being able to penetrate most defensive networks. Now, by the mid-22nd century, the Klingons introduced the Mark I Photon Torpedo. And the key thing with the Mark I Photon Torpedo is that it introduces a new warhead design which focuses and controls the reaction for maximum energy efficiency. It does this not by using dilithium crystals, because the Klingons don't have many dilithium crystals and certainly not enough to go blowing them all up, Instead, they'll use magnetic constriction fields to manipulate and shape the reaction as it takes place within the warhead. And this is to ensure maximum efficiency in the detonation. So this is really where you see the modern photon torpedo. It also saw improved guidance. The deflector would also improved and could ward off a lot of laser systems. And this, going forward, would continue to be useful even into the 23rd century with the Four Years' War. One of the things in that conflict, Starfleet does have defensive lasers, but with the navigational deflector on a photon torpedo, the laser just bounces off. So it was a very good way of ensuring that your round struck home, and this was the key thing. They also improved the guidance systems. These were getting very long-range and very accurate and they were very powerful. So it really gave the Klingons a substantial advantage throughout the 22nd and early 23rd century. And it wasn't till the latter half of the Four Years' War that the Federation starts catching up with that technology. So it was a very effective torpedo in its day and really saw a long run. It would see sub-developments as well. 
but the effective mechanics of using magnetic fields to concentrate the reaction and ensure maximum yield, it was the same across all the various models made during this period. Now, after the Four Years' War, the Federation starts catching up technologically, and we certainly see that by the 2260s. They're in a much better parity with the Klingons. They have their own photon torpedoes, and they're reasonably comparable in most respects. But in 2270, the Klingons have a new trick up their sleeve, a new kind of photon torpedo. You see, there was a problem with, the, with all previous designs of torpedo is that when the torpedo detonated, it would detonate as a sphere, but your target will only occupy about a quarter of that overall sphere, if that. So anywhere up to three quarters of your yield is just going into empty space. It's just exploding into the void. It's completely useless doing that. So even though you are achieving maximum yield, the amount of that yield that is actually channeled into the target, it's anywhere between two, a third to a quarter of what you would actually have. And so what the Klingons invent in the 2270s is a new form of photon torpedo. Again, you've got the same premise of maximizing yield, but they also extend the use of the magnetic field to shape the energy discharge. So basically they create an inverted conical field. And what this does is, it's, it's essentially, it's comparable, if you think of a modern day equivalent, it would be comparable to a heat round or a, you know, a high explosive anti-tank weapon, in that you have this conical shape, this inverted cone, and then that creates a shape, basically creates a jet, a hot gas, which then strikes the target in a concentrated area and bores through the armor. And this is pretty much the same with the 2270 model photon torpedo. The discharge is shaped and thus over 90% of the energy yield is channeled directly into the target or the target's shields more often than not. But this does give it the ability to inflict bleed through damage. So, so the energy might for a split second overwhelm the shield in a small area and actually cause superficial damage to the ship. So there was an advantage in that is that you started inflicting bleed through damage. So for example, if you wanted to take out the enemy's engines, you could shoot at them with their shields up. And as long as you were aiming at the engines, you may well get energy bleed through that resulted in their engines being inoperable. Now that wasn't really what it was made for, but it was a useful uh, tr it was a useful trait. But more importantly than that is that over 90% of your yield was now going into the target or into the target's shield grid. Far more effective. It was pretty much the same yield, the charge hadn't changed, but now it was being all directly channeled into the target. And that's what made it very, and that gave it a substantial advantage over previous models of photon torpedo. And this is the model of photon torpedo you are seeing the Klingons use throughout the 70s and 80s and 90s. And that is why they have this overwhelming preference for this model of torpedo, because it is so powerful and it has this ability to cause superficial damage through the enemy shield. By no means does it render shields useless, but it does certainly do a good job of, of degrading your shield's ability to protect your ship. Your shields are no longer a guarantee that you won't take damage. So it was a really strong advantage in that late 23rd century. And again, this was something that Starfleet was very aware of. And they knew that if the Klingons were going to attack them, they would definitely be using these kind of torpedoes. So of course, Starfleet does capture and begin reverse engineering these weapons and starts to imitate them with a similar model of photon torpedo and that is really where you get the modern photon torpedo really since then there hasn't been much development after the end of the 23rd century is really plateaued in what it can do now there will still be future developments in photon torpedoes and that is something that starfleet would really start overtaking the klingons in doing 
first and foremost, multiple launch systems or burst fire launchers, which were very popular. Now, that's more about the launching system than it is the torpedo. The actual torpedo and how it operates is very similar to the 23rd century in terms of its basic mechanics. Of course, there'll be newer software, but again, that's software and it changes very rapidly. The hardware really has its origins in the 23rd century Klingon torpedoes. And those are what really became modern photon torpedoes. So, thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe for more. I'll thank my members. Commander David Reeves, Martin McConville, Jeff Hallam, Captain's Quarters, Miami Jules, Chase Rector, PQSK, Philip Ty, Tully DT, and Bird Monster. And my Centurions, Nathaniel Mead, Arian Fulton, Pendleberry, BOS Domestic Disputes, Adam Bowman, and John Nicole. Thank you guys for supporting the channel and supporting this content that you all enjoy. And I'll see you guys in the next video.